surgery has changed. Surgery has changed over the past few decades because more and more procedures are performed to tiny incisions in the skin. This type of procedures give many advantages to patients because they can recover much, much quicker. I'm a professor in minimally invasive technology. Together with a group of engineers, we develop smart devices because we want more and more procedures to tiny incisions, such as keyhole surgery and needle interventions. And we want our designs of our devices simple because we have to go to tiny and more tiny and small and small incisions. Here you see an example of such a device. It's a device that has novel design at the tip because it combines several functions. It is used for the procedures in the knee. It is steerable so that you can reach all posi positions in the knee, but it's also stiff and it has a very strong punch to treat bony tissue in the knee. And it can easily be cleaned and sterilized. And then look at this device. <coughs> it's used to train, train surgeons. You can practice on it, practice all kinds of tasks. This is not easy, so you have to train and practice. We also measure the movements and we measure forces so that we get an objective value of the performance of the surgeon because we want to them that to become better. And with these devices, we aim to make surgery safer. But then, that was that article. Cut out of a magazine. It was on my desk for weeks. I do not know who gave me that article, but it was about women in Africa. It was about women in Africa who were abandoned from their community because they smell. They smell because they were after pregnancy too long in labor, and the baby pushed too long on their abdominal organs, so the organs got damaged, and they become incontinent, and they smell, and were abandoned, sent away from their communities. These stories touched me, because also with, for, with my first son, I needed help during delivery. But with a little help, with vacuum assistance, the problem was solved, and my son was born. I realized how lucky I had been. I could not believe that two million women walking around with this problem, being incontinent, while this problem can be say, say, solved by surgery, but for them, there is no surgery. They did not have access to surgery. I started reading more about it. Imagine, this is the world. Seven and a half billion people. Then roughly two and a half billion people have access to high quality sur surgery in well-equipped operating rooms. Two billion people, three billion people have access to some kind of surgery. It is not really safe. You might get a nasty infection or an unsafe anesthesia. And two billion people do not have access to surgery at all. For them, there is no operating room. For them, there is no surgery. And if then a boy falls out of a tree, breaks his leg, he might become handicapped for the rest of his life. Or a situation as appendicitis or hernia might become life-threatening diseases. I found out how things have changed. The number of deaths due to infectious diseases have been decreasing. And currently more people die because they do not have access to basic surgery compared to malaria, HIV and tuberculosis altogether. Every year, 17 million people die because of lack of safe surgery. Realize that's the number of people that live in the Netherlands every year. Last year, several surgical groups, the Lancet, the World Health Organization, and the World Bank started raising their alarms. They showed that surgery is now one of the, is the most cost-effective public health intervention in low-resource countries. 
They showed that it's cost-effective to perform surgery, also in those countries. It promotes economic growth. So we cannot afford not to treat that boy that fell out of the tree. And looking at the article on my desk, I was amazed that we're working for 20 years together with surgeons. I did not know the impact of lack of safe surgery. And I know many sur surgeons are going to these countries trying to help. But I was wondering, where are the engineers? Where are the engineers to give those surgeons better tools to perform surgery in those countries? Where are they? I could hardly find them. So I thought, okay, we have to do something, but what and how? We developed those smart devices, but these are for keyhole surgery. And for keyhole surgery, you need a well-equipped operating room. In the last part of the world, there is no operating room. There's hardly anything, there's lack of everything. So how to scale up and how to scale up quickly? Well, maybe breweries might be the answer. Maybe we need the help of beer. Because if we want to scale up quickly in an affordable and effective way, we need to use local resources. And beer and breweries are everywhere in the world. There are several reasons why breweries might help. They have access to clean water and energy. They have experience with cleaning and sterilization processes. They have the processes well controlled. They work with well-trained employees, and they can tell that putting a towel around the tap does not really make water clean. They know the local cultures, they know the local problems, and they have an excellent logistic network to transport the full and empty bottles. Now, this network can also be used to transport disposables, clean and dirty instruments, from the big cities to the small hospitals. And finally, they have a high quality, they know how to set up high quality infrastructure in low resource settings. Several of the breweries in those countries are owned by famous brands. So we have to convince them to help. We have to convince them to help to set up the high quality infrastructure. And we need their expertise on how to run and manage a hospital like a factory. But with breweries, we're not there yet. We still need those devices. Can we not make a big step here then? Can we not make keyhole surgery also possible in low resource countries? If we make this tiny incision, I need we do need a whole sterile operating theater. Can we need cover up this incision and also cover up the instrument? Then we don't need an expensive sterile operating room anymore. That might reduce cost and also reduce patient risk. So let's try to make affordable treatment to tiny incision possible. But then, look at this device. It's a device to use to cut and seal tissue. It costs between $300 and $400 and is thrown away after one-time use. We need engineers to come with a better solution here. For endoscopic keel surgery, we also need an expensive camera. But look at this, there's also an endoscopic camera. You can connect it to a smartphone and a tablet. It costs only $10. We need this kind of Solutions. So we need engineers to transform this kind of solutions also in the healthcare setting. So what do we need? We need many engineers coming up with affordable, smart, simple devices. Coming up with training systems, training met methods to train many more surgeons and healthcare workers. And we need many disciplines to set up high quality infrastructure. For example, the breweries to make surgery safer. So that also these children can start working on their own dreams. Maybe become a healthcare worker in their own community. So then let's make surgery safer. 
let's make safe surgery available for everyone.